to go quickly over what we've what we talked about, we have our class to, to show how things work. We create the class called employee that has some salary, yada, yada, some data in it, and did stuff. And we overloaded the, the input and output in it as text, like you're doing it on a screen, reading and writing. And then what we have done, we said that we can actually, <clears throat> let me just find the proper thing. So we can actually read and write all these things into a file. This is a sequential file where we actually uh, create the employee and uh, instead of uh, actually using C in, we are using the file. We've done this before in OOP244, you know how it works. So in, so in here, I overloaded the uh, the insertion and extraction operator, exactly how I get it from the screen, comma separated, whatever it is, I'm not going to go through the format. You overload it and you say get, extract the employee from the file and keep going until the file ends, right? And then you can show specific records in a file by going back through your file. By going back through your file, so you create an employee, you say, Okay, clear my F screams. Go to the beginning of the file we talked about seek. Did I talk about seek P? I didn't talk seek P and seek G. So seek P starts, uh, uh, tells to the absolute location that you want to go to the file and read from there. So I'm gonna say clear the file, go to the beginning of the file and start reading until you get to the row. So if I have 50 rows, I start from the beginning, I go and I want to get the 35th. I've got to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm going to read everything until I reach the record 35. When I read, I'll stop and I'm going to return that one out. Yuck. So if you want to show a, a file in reverse order, you know how much work you're supposed to do. Just imagine you have to count to the end, then come back up. Count to the one before the end and go up. Count and you do like that one by one to be able to show things in reverse, which is awful. Okay, so that was the text thingy that we had. Life was beautiful and everything was good. It's, it, it looks like it works. Like if I run it, the computer is fast, you'll see, oh, it's reading, that's nice, I'm just showing. I can go anywhere in my file and read the fifth record, then the third record, anywhere I want in my file, I can go back and forth. Where you are not going back and forth every single time, it's sadly, like I used to teach this thing so easily when we had cassettes. <laughs> Anybody knows what is a cassette? Some of you are saying, what are you talking about? You know, there's that little thing with a ribbon in it, and you put it in a tape recorder, you press the play, and it goes, and if you want to listen to the fifth thing, you have to go <laughs> forward to get to that one, and oh my God, back and forth, try to find the fifth, fifth track. That was the thing. That's what you're doing here. Every single time you want to get a record, you are starting from the beginning, listening to all the file until you hit the one that you want and you can actually display it. And this is when you are going to certain row. That's beautiful. Imagine if you want to search for something. You have to go one by one. You know how long it's going to take. Anyway. So uh, we can execute this. This should work. Do I have the binary file in here? Uh, does it write? It, yeah, it actually writes it. Does it? No, it reads it. Do I have the file anywhere? Let me just see if I have the file so I, so I can bring the file. There's somewhere that I'm generating the, the employee. Yeah, here it is. It's from last session. Two seconds. Yeah, this is it. Okay, so <clears throat> it's it's be by it's file employee.txt, yes. So <clears throat> um I'm bringing it up. That's the one.
So yeah, so this is how it worked. I had this, the, the, the employees over there and then I go through it and it shows specific records and it tells me if the record exists or not and, and, and uh, hopefully it will run. We'll see if it doesn't, it doesn't. There you go, so it's showing it. So I go from the beginning to the end, show everything. If I want to show the 10th one, I have to start from the 10th one and, and get to that one and pick that one up. And that's what happens. Very simple and straightforward, yes. Seek P, okay. Seek P and seek G. We have two functions that we have in files. Um, because um, this is how, uh, because this is how the IO stream is inherited. Not this, this is me, this is not IO stream, this is IO stream. Okay, so so because because this is a, so you had you have the IOS at the top. We can see that, right? Yeah. We have IOS at the top, then out of this one, you have two things that are uh, inherited out of IOS. One is I stream, right? And the other one is O stream. This one is creating a singleton out of, this is created called C in. A singleton out of this one is created called C out. What is a singleton? What is a singleton? Okay. You are, okay, yeah. Object-oriented uh, system analysis. You are yet taking that course, right? Object-oriented design. Singleton are objects that, that can be only instantiated into one thing. You cannot create two instances out of it, singleton. Okay, I'll explain later on how to do it, but anyways. Uh, so C in and C out, and then um, because they are single, so C out, uh, and then you have uh, a C in a singleton, uh, anyways. But, uh, and then after this, we create two things over here. So we create I F stream, where we do all the file stuff, add all the file feature and OF stream, right? And then we have in, we need to, unlike C in and C out that are on two different devices, we have these two on the same device. It could be on a hard drive, any stream that you have, right? So because of that, there was a marriage, these two happily married, and they have a child called F stream. What F stream is, oh, my handwriting sucks, man. Anyway, so F stream over here is essentially uh, everything that OF stream and IF stream is, which means you can read and write into a file, right? When they did that, because they didn't want to go through scope resolution and stuff like that, they said, okay, because there are two different entities and I'm reading and writing f with two different uh, objects into the same file, if I want to go read the fifth record, the seeking for that is different when I want to go right into, a, into the sixth record. They are two different things. So they said they are both called seek. So how do we actually distinguish which one belongs to what? They say the one that is for writing, we use a put after, seek P. So if you want to go to certain location in your file, you use seek P, okay? If you want to go someplace to read, you use the getting method. That is seek G. If you want to know where it's supposed to write at the moment, where it's supposed to read from at the moment, you use tell P. Tell P tells you if I read where it's going to read from. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, write. When I want to write, where it's going to write into. And tell G, it's going to tell you if I'm about to read, where it's going to read from, which address it's going to read from. Okay. And these all accept uh, return stream pools. That's why that's seek P. So it tell, we tell where to go. Yeah. 
There, okay, so you just made a huge mistake. Is there a file that is not binary? Is there anything that's not binary in a computer? So that's DOS. That's disk operating system. That's Windows. That's distinguished between the two. I can tell you the history. It's extremely boring why they had a text, text file and a binary file. They're all the same. On a Unix system, no difference. Oh, I'll, that's a beautiful question. I'll be good with this thing. Can I wipe this out? OK. That's why I told you I cannot go to smart pointers today. <laughs> OK, so now we know what the thing So that if you create an F stream instance, you can iOS in or iOS out. When you do I stream, IF stream, or OF stream, by default, an OF stream is iOS out, and IF stream is iOS in. An IF stream cannot do iOS out. It cannot do that. You know the flags that we add in and out after the opening the file? You read the things, right? You didn't? Did you? So, yeah. So, <clears throat> in here, if you create IF stream, let me see if I have something a bit. So, if you say IF stream, uh, F, and in here you put a file name, a.bin. In here you can say iOS, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, what do I write over here? That's because it's input. Uh, so there's nothing to write over here. If I write F stream over here, then it becomes two different things. It is I and input and output. I can decide what I want to do. Is it iOS in? And then you put over here a bar. A bar is a binary or, but don't worry. That, that thing means you want both features. So you gotta say, I'm gonna write in it or I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read from it or I'm going to write into it, okay? Or maybe I want to append. I want to read from it, or I want to append. Okay, these are all in the in the notes. So you can decide what you want to do with the file. I want to read, I want to read from the file, but when I'm writing, I want to write always at the end of the file. I don't want it to be in the middle of the file. You can do that. You can say when you open it. When I initially open it, when I initially write, I want it to be at end. So you can say iOS at end, ATE. Okay, that means uh, you uh, when you open it, if you initially write, it's going to be at the end. But you have a choice to go right in the middle. Okay, so these things they are there. You can add, and that's what F stream is. Now, why, why? We can't do this thing in a text. Why don't we just seek in a text to the third record? Right? Who has a very short name here? Anyone? Short? No, no, full name. <laughs> Anyone? Anyways, let me just come up with something myself. Anyways, so, so this is my name, right? Right? And this is another name, Al Lee. Right? <laughs> Correct? That's my name. This is the other name. Now we want to put these names in a file. And all the records are like this. So, and you know, a file is just a stream of bytes, right? There is no table anywhere for anything. It's just a long array of bytes, right? So when you create the, the thing, the, the, the file, this is what your file looks like, okay? 
This is the first record, this is the second record, this is the third record, this is the fourth record, fifth record, and it keeps going like that. Then you have some kind of a delimiter in here, backslash in or whatever it is, right? Now if I want to go to the third record, how do I know where to jump? There are no equal linings anywhere. There are no equal length in a row. I cannot say size off the thing and jump. So if, my, if I have, if I, I can't do it when I'm, because I'm writing in a text, the short one will have less memory, the bigger one has big, so the records are not equal. But when I'm writing these things as binary, this is what happens. So this is the text file. In a binary file, when I, and that doesn't happen by magic. <laughs> when I say a text file, I don't mean I opened it as text or binary. They are both binary files. I am writing text in one, and I'm writing uh, memory dump in the other one. Memory dump is the exact map of memory when I'm writing into it. So the other one is this. I hope this is like equal sizes kind of thing. Okay, but this is what my name occupies in here. And this is what the other name is occupying. And this name is occupying. And this name is occupying. And this name is occupying. All right. Now, if I want to read the third record, all I need to do is to say jump to 3 minus 1 multiply the size of the record, which means it goes one, sub, one jump. It goes one jump, two jumps, and here is where the third record begins. I just load it into the class, and everything. I don't need to do any string copy or anything. Because I dumped the whole class in there, as is, I just load whatever I have and dumping back. So I do a shallow copy. Everybody understands shallow and deep copy? Remember that? So we don't do a deep copy over here. We do a shallow copy. We get everything in a file. We just on the, on the class. And because it's an exact map of the memory of the class, everything sits in its place. Name is in its place. Everything, uh, the last name, age, employee, everything sits in place, and I have my thing. <clears throat> Obviously, the second one is going to, the binary one is going to take much more space because I have a size of things. But we're going to show you that not necessarily we have a way to go around that one either. So what we're going to essentially design today is what you do when you do dynamic memory allocation. We're going to create a heap file, a file where you put your heap memory, your dynamic stuff, and a file that you put your static, statically allocated stuff. OK, and I'll explain. OK, so we understand the necessity of binaries to be able, binary files to be able to access the file quickly, right? Are we OK down to this point? So what is an index file? When they say index, what does it mean? What do they do? What they do is that we have over here, so this is 0, address 0. This is address n. This is address 2n. This is 3n. This is 4n, correct? <laughs> Why can't I write n? There you go. Correct? That's what it is, right? OK? So we don't need an index file for this, because each one is sitting at a place that I can calculate it, correct? You understand this, right? But when you look at the top one, this is address of the first one. This is address of the second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one. Each one is an absolutely different thing that has no relation with each other, right? So what an index file is, is that <clears throat> they ask, they go through the business logic and say, what are we searching for here? What are we going to search for? Are we going to search for names or are we going to search for a student number? You see, whenever you want to search, they say, give me the student number, give me the phone number, something that cannot vary in size, something that is... So for those things, what they do, they create what they call is an index file. The index file, what it does is this. 
it, so these are, let's say, each one is an employee record. And if you look at our employee record over here, we'll see that the employee record is, if you look at your employee record, it has a name that is 52, it has a salary, but it has an employee number that is exactly an int, right? And an int is, what, four bytes, eight bytes, whatever you have. It's always the same, correct? So what they do, as they are actually writing the employee in that file, like that, they are writing the names of the employee in that file like that. What they do is this. They create a secondary file with identical size records. OK? They put all the employee numbers here because they are all exactly the same size. They are all integers, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Wow, lucky. Okay. And then what they do is this. They write here zero. They write here A, B, C. You know A, B, C are addresses, right? D, E, F. So what happens, you say, give me the student number. Because it's a student number, it's a fixed thing. They give it to the algorithm, and the algorithm searches through the file quickly because they're all the same size. It does a binary search, jumps up and down in your file, very quickly finds the student number that you want, right? And gives you that record. You get the address, you jump exactly to the beginning of what you have, and you extract the uh, variable size thing. The top file is called an index file. So whenever it's now, I'll show you actually, I actually implemented that with this employee so you'll see how it's done. Okay? How we can actually save. This employee is not, uh, it doesn't have any resources. Everything's inside its belly. If I write this employee, I don't need any index file because everything's inside the employee. I have no problem holding the employee over there. Right? Let's take a look at the other one. <clears throat> so, let's take this employee out. And uh, this one, I'll save it as. Uh, Text in out. And I'm going to bring up another employee. So what's the difference between this employee and that employee? Look at it. It has the salary and employee number, fine. But look at the name. The name is not inside the class anymore. If I write this employee like the other one, I'm going to end up with garbage because it's going to save the employee number, the salary number, and the address of the name at the moment the program is running in the memory. That saves it in a file. You turn off your computer, you turn it on, you try to read. It tells you yesterday when this program was running where the name of the employee was in memory, which is now nothing. Garbage. So that's not going to work out. For doing this, what are we doing? If for reading and writing, I don't only enter uh, an object file system, the objects that I'm f f saving the file, but also the name. So I will save the object that is all the same size in a binary file with exact record size, <clears throat> record size, right? Then I'm going to put the name sequential in a file. But as I'm writing the name, I'm going to ask the, the C, tell me where the file, tell, tell, G, tell P, 
tell me where the information is being written. So it's going to tell me this name is being written as address 952. I'll take that 952 and I save it right beside these things. So the index file of mine will look like this. The index file of mine will look like this. I don't know what I'm saving. Let me go through it and show you. I didn't prepare for this. This is from last semester. So uh, if I go to the CPP side, when I'm actually writing, take a look. There we go. See, this is the write that is happening. I'm just writing one employee over here. So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say, OK, I'm writing in the object thingy, right? And I'm writing in the name file. Object file, name file. The place that I'm going to save the object, the place that I'm going to save the resources. This is it's in a heap. This is in the, the stack of the program. I'm going to say, give me where the no name location is. I'm going to ask, what is NFS is about to write? So name location will be the address of the name inside the file for the names. Then I'm going to say, tell me what was the name, what is the length of the name? I not only keep where I'm saving it, I am, I am actually saving what was the name, name of length of the name, because each, each name has a different length, right? Because each one has a different name, length, I need to know how many I have to read after. Then after I do this, I write, first of all, the object itself, I dump it. I'm going to go, go to the address of the beginning of the object, cast it to a constant character pointer. We know that. That's how write works. And I'm going to say, write size of this. So what is size of this? Size of this is, size of this is, why well, I can't split? No, that's not the one. Something's wrong in here. What's going on? No. Oh, because I have only one window open. OK, so the other one is employee.h. Now I can split. There we go. <clears throat> so when I say write this object, into memory to size of this, we know that size of this is only these three, a double, an integer, and a character pointer. So this double is 8 bytes, probably integer. I think it's 8 bytes too nowadays because it's 64 bit, OK? And this one is 8, so 3 8, 24 bytes, right? So I'm going to write 24 bytes <coughs> of the employee stuff in the file. So this is the first thing that's going to get written in the, that, that I'm going to write in a file. Let me just. Make it a little more organized. So this is what I'm writing. First, I'm writing the object itself. So the object is written here, correct? After the objects is written over there, what do I do? What is the next thing I do? What am I? I am saying, go to the address of name location and write it in a file. So I write the name location itself that is an integer. Is it an integer? It's a name post, whatever. Integer, size t, whatever it is, I don't care. I'm going to write it as binary in there. So I'm going to write where the, where the name is. So name, location, goes over here, correct? And then I'm going to write the si uh, size of the name over here. So then I'm going to write name size, correct? And every time it's being written, I'm going to follow the exact same thing. This is here. I didn't mention what happens next. I'm, I'm going to do that. So those things I'm going to explain later, but give me two seconds, OK? Uh, this right you haven't seen. I'm, I'm going to show it to you, OK? This right, 61, I didn't tell you. OK, so this right is not done, OK? Give me two seconds. So, so what I'm going to do next, yeah. So. The, uh, mm, 
I was here. Yeah. So, so I'll repeat the exact same thing over and over. OK? And, I, and it keeps going like that. So I'm going to have name and name. And it keeps going. What is important to notice is that these sizes are always identical. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? You don't look happy. Are we OK with this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on? OK. So what happens over here? I'm going to say right in, in NFS, in the name file system, write the name up to name lengths. So that when the first one is writing, when the first one is writing, this is what happens over here. So it writes it right in here. Obviously, for the name location, it puts 0. And for name size, let's say it puts 30. So let's say it's 30. It puts 30 here. And when the second one is writing for name location, it writes 30, because that's location 30, right? That starts over here. And let's say it's 25 characters. It writes 25. And for the next one, For the next one, it writes 55. Name location is 55. And the length, let's say, it's 10. Right? So the data that I have from my class is now saved in two files. Now, when I want to read it, what do I do? You say you want the third record. I say, no problem. You want the second record. You, I jump to the second record. What I do is this. In my read, first I'm going to read everything into the file. So it reads everything into this, correct? It's going to read the salary, the employee number, and some garbage address, which I don't care about, right? So it's going to do all these things. So the garbage address is in here, and employee number, and everything. Then. I'm going to say, yeah, read the name location from the file. So it reads the second one that is name location, which is 30. Then I'm going to say, read the name length that is 25. So name location and name length is read. So now I know where the name is saved in the second file. And what was the length? Then after that, I'm going to say, obviously, if the file was successful, open, and all this stuff, because I may hit the end of the file, and I have to know that I'm, that I'm not reading anymore. But if I, if I could read the file properly, now allocate enough space for the name, overwrite the name, OK? And uh, seek to the name location read into the name up to name length character, and then set the end to 0. So I construct my uh, character string just like that. I, go, I, I allocate memory. I go to that location, which is location 30. I read for 25 characters, put it in the name, and I'm going to make name 25, which is the 26th byte, 0. Therefore, the string is completed, and I get out and the file is read. So now, I took advantage. Obviously, if you want to search for the name, it's going to be the same linear thing, very difficult thing to do. OK? But still, you can do binary search on this. Binary search first goes in the middle, and then goes back and forth, and do on, so on and so forth, right? The thing is that, although the name is written uh, in, a, in an unequal way, because the record itself is there, I can jump to the record, find what the address is, and go jump to the next one very quickly. So because of that index that I have, this uh, unindexed mishmash of a file of mine 
is perfectly organized. Yes? Yeah. Loc location of the name in the set, where the name begins in the second file. Yes, I did that. When I'm writing, I do the tell P. I'm telling you, and, and when I'm reading, I'm doing a seek G to the same place tell P told me. So the place I wrote, I'm going to read from. Does that make sense? OK, so this is essentially indexing. This is how, like, you have done databases, right? When you create a primary key, what happens? Why primary key searches so fast? Because it's indexed. It does that automatically for you. Anything that you turn it to an index or, or you put a unique thing at the top and say so this is unique, then it actually organizes it and sets it separately so you can do a quicker search on it. OK? I heard a soap. Yes. Oh, I use a database so you get <laughs> Yeah, like this is like if you want to create everything from scratch, this is what it is. The reason for teaching you this is, again, you may have to implement something once in your lifetime for some reason. I don't know, you are creating something and no database is available and you're doing it, but install MySQL and get rid of this. Just, <laughs> just insert everything into a database and fetch from a database. Right? So, but if, yeah, but you're right. If you are doing something dynamic, either you have to completely make it sequential and say, the heck with it, I'm just going to write it sequentially and be done with it, uh, or you can do it like this. Okay? That makes your um, storage and retrieval hundreds of times faster. Okay? So, yeah, so this is how it works. And, uh, So this is the right for it. OK, so these are the exact same things, but the difference is that now I have two files, employee bin and name bin. OK? So to just walk through it and see how it works, it creates, of course, it could be O stream. Like, I could, let me stop it. OK? I, we could have done this just to give you an idea. Although we don't need it because it's just for writing, I could, I could go. I could do this. So if I wanted to, it, absolutely no need. I'm just writing it so you see what I meant when I, when I told you you can have multiple things. OK, so now if I run it, what? Error. Oh, because I'm, I'm receiving an OF stream over there in my right. Forget it. I'm going to bring it back to what it was before. Uh, then I have to change everything in my class. I don't want to do it. But if, if the purpose was to read that right at the same time, then you do it this way. Anyways. So uh, the vector is created. Then we come over here, and we're going to start writing. So as you see when it comes into write, It gets what the location of the file is, which is obviously zero because it's right at the beginning. Then it says what is the name of length of the name, which is 13. So writes the, uh, the name and everything in the file system. 
then writes the object itself, then writes the location and the length, and it comes out, and the first record is read, written. And it keeps doing it over and over until everything is done. And at the end, we end up with something like this. So when you look at the employee bin, it's all binary stuff that I don't understand anything about. These are all uh, double values and stuff that are dumped into memory, OK? And the address and location. But when you go to the, to the name, this is what you have. Everything squeezed in one big thing, no null termination or anything, because I'm taking care of it by having the length uh, set automatically for me. So this, the, and all the names are the employees are there. And when I want to read them, binary, what do I call this? Binary, uh, first of all, spell the binary right. <laughs> binary, um, uh, uh, out for class with resource. OK. Now, if I want to read the files, this is what happens. So look at my show record now. So my show record is a simple, instead of looping through everything, starting from the top and come to, the, to down to find out which record. Remember the other one that I did? I, I looped through one by one until I got to the row. Everybody's looking at me as I'm nuts. Uh, The other one, when I wanted to show the record, if it was at the row, I had to read one by one in a loop until I hit, hit it, and then I showed it. OK? So I read that many, and I, and I showed it, right? In this one, that's not the case. It's a simple calculation. So I'm going to say, this go to row number minus 1, obviously, minus 1, because uh, uh, it has to be uh, uh, the address of the beginning. Size of the employee plus size of the stream pose plus size of the size T. Because the stream pose of mine is for the position of the name in the other thing. And my size T is the size of the name in the other file. So these three together will be the, the, the size of my record, yes. So when you write something, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because because I saved the object first, then two primary two, two primitive values. Now I could have see when you design an object to be saved in a file in that fashion, let's say I don't want to do a database. Okay, instead of instead of creating the employee like that. Instead of, instead of creating the employee like this, instead of creating the employee like this, I could create an anonymous structure over here called rec. So I have an employee. This is the record for it. And in that record, I could just hold salary, employee number, and uh, whatchamacallit, name location, and uh, name, location, and uh, yeah, name size. And then kept this one outside and only wrote those values in, in the file instead of writing the name for no reason. You follow what I'm saying? Or if you want to do hack it, you could have created this name pointer with a union and made this name pointer to be a name pointer and a location, and, uh, and, and an array of two things for a location and, 
uh, and uh, the size. So it occupies the same space. So when you are saving it in a file, you do it that way. When you are, you know what I mean? You follow? Yeah, that's exactly. You don't do equal to an employee object. You remember we wrote a memory dump? Oh, we didn't write a memory dump because we are not in arrays yet. We are not in pointers yet. We did a memory dump, I think, in OP244. But what I'm saying is that when you look at it, this, this is essentially, this is, uh, This function does that. Oh, that's not, this, no, sorry, this function. The second one. This function does exactly that. What is a shallow copy? What does it mean when they say shallow copy? No, don't, don't tell me that. What is shallow copy? When it's not deep. What is deep copy? When it's not shallow. No. The, what is a shallow copy? When I say shallow copy, what happens? Shallow copy is this. You see this Xerox machine? This does shallow copy. It doesn't interpret what's inside. You put a picture, you get a picture. You put a text, you get a text. It gets the pixels and copies it one by one regardless of what is the data. If you put some garbage, you get garbage. This is shallow copy. Deep copy is to look at the data, interpret it, and pass it along. Got it? When you write it like, oh, this is, uh, actually, this is the right one, so I have to. So in here, you are saying, go to the address of the current object, byte by byte, write it into the file. So it looks at the first byte. The first byte is one eighth of that double. Takes that one, writes it. It doesn't care it's a double. It goes through the thing, that 24 bytes, one by one, and writes it into the file. It doesn't care it's an employee. It just knows it's an address in memory, and this is its size. That is literally shallow copy. That's what the compiler does when you do not implement copy constructor and copy assignment. That's exactly what the compiler does. When you have two objects of same type, you set one to another, it doesn't care what is the object. It knows two pieces of identical memory, it picks one and puts it in the other one. And this is the exact same thing over here. So this is exactly what you're saying. Can I just set it? Yes, you are setting it using the write function and using the read function. Okay? All right. Yeah, so now when I, re when I run this program and, and do the reading, so I want to read a file, this is what read from a file, this is what happens. It has the name location, a name location, it deletes the name obviously because it's a read. Then it says over here, read, so now if you look at, <clears throat> I'll go on this. So if you look at this now, this is what you have. You see, salary, employee number, everything's garbage. As soon as this read happens, you will see that salary is perfectly good, employee number is good, but name is garbage. Why name is garbage? 
because it's the address of the employee at the time I was saving it. The address of the name of the employee at the time of us saving it. Now it's just garbage. So what do I do? <clears throat> I'm going to say, get me the, the location in the file. It's going to tell me the location in the file is, seriously? Anyways, it's in here somewhere. Uh, um, stream post, why is stream post is showing? The, oh, it is zero because it's the first one. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is zero. It's the first one. So it's reading it, and then it says, what is the length? So it comes over here, the length is 13. It allocates 14 characters. It goes to the zero location, which is the beginning, and it reads exactly 13 into name. And when we do that, the name becomes Homer Simpson garbage, 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 garbage after. Because I have the 14 bytes, but afterwards, whatever is in memory, the string is not showing it, right? Now I'm going to say put a stop sign at the end of it, and that makes the name actually only Homer Simpson. And, and I read it. And just to check the check it one more time, if when, oh, yeah, so it's, it's writing it. When I'm coming over here, now I'm going to do another read. So it reads everything into this. Again, this has the, the salary, the employee number, a garbage for reading. Now it reads the name location. The name location, now it's 13. Thank you very much. So it goes to the next name. Now it sees what is the length, and the length is 12. It gets 13 characters, seeks to address 13, reads from 13 for 12 bytes. Obviously, I'm going to have net Flanders and then garbage after. And it null terminates it to turn it to a C string. And now I have net Flanders, and I'm good. Got it? That's indexing, ladies and gentlemen. Questions? The right, one more time. Finds out where the location that is writing into, gets the length of the name, and writes that much in that location. Saves the current file, saves where the name was, says what the size of the name was and comes up. You can actually, we could have actually created a, a, a class for this. We could create a class for this called uh, employee record. So employee record had an employee in it. Uh, and uh, and the, the locations in it. Anyways, all right, so that's that. Any more questions on it? Yes. Oh, there are two ways that you can eat a sandwich. You can either put it in your mouth or you can eat it like this. Okay? Like this is single coat backslash zero single coat. Zero is just eating it. Why? Because you. What is two single codes? When you put two single codes in C language, it means I don't remember the ASCII code. Give me the ASCII code. You put single code A, single code. That means 65. You could just write 65, but you cannot remember it. Therefore, you use the single code operator, correct? Now, if the character is not printable, it's not on your keyboard, it's not typable, how do you print it? You put single code, single quote, you put a backslash, you put the ASCII code in there, right? Correct? So that essentially means I want to write this as a character. So when you put single quote, backslash, zero, single quote, essentially means I want the code of the character whose code is zero, which is zero. Does that make sense? But if it makes you happy, put that one. Actually, that's kind of because, so essentially, this, this is the same thing as this.
So you are telling the compiler, I want to cast that zero to an integer, to a, to a byte, to a small integer, which it, it does it automatically in an assignment, right? You only, this means eight bits of zero. This means eight bits of zero. This means 64 bits of zero. But in assignment, it doesn't care. It casts it. All right. Uh, I think we're good. OK, let's take a break. Awesome. What do you wrap things for in real life? When you wrap something, what do you want to do with it? Usually, you wrap things to carry it around, right? When you want to carry things around, it has lots of bells and whistles. It has lots of bells and whistles. You want to wrap it so you can just have one thing and pass it around easily. Right? This is a chicken sandwich. Get it, right? I don't want to give you the bread and a chicken and a sauce and a thing. I'm just going to wrap it and give it. So we have that in C++. You can actually wrap things into one thing and pass it around if you want. Okay? That's what wrappers do. <laughs> they don't wrap. <laughs> you know what I mean by wrap? <laughs> but I mean, by wrap is that <laughs> wrap W wrap. Okay, so what? Yeah, whatever. It's English, don't worry. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> so. <laughs> Say, uh, <laughs> say uh, all these things are in functional, okay? So you have to include functional, okay? Uh, say I have these two functions. They see one is a function, the other one is, uh, uh, tell me, uh, the other one is, uh, uh, is a functor, and I may have, I don't need to do that anymore, so let's bring it up. And I have uh, Why am I, why I have two mains? What did I do? Seriously, so my brain is at the verge of, I didn't even see it. I didn't, I didn't even see it. I'm like, <laughs> so these three functions, they all have the same signature, correct? Right? Okay. I can wrap them in the same wrapper and then pass it around if I want to. How do you create a function wrapper? This is how you do it. You write function. This is syntax that I'm teaching you later on when we are talking. For example, when you are doing a search algorithm and you want to pass a function that does comparison, or you do some multi-threading thing and you are doing a search on something, you want to write a function that does the key comparison for you. You wrap it to a function wrapper and you give it to the algorithm. Okay? So function wrappers are for that. I'll, I'll, you'll see. Anyway, so, so, so you write function, and then you write your signature. So this is going to return a long, and it's going to receive an int and an int. So you tell to the function wrapper what your signature is. You give it a name, and you set it to, say, multiplication. Now, from now on, this A is, that for, is a wrapper for that function. Okay? I can do the exact same thing for the uh, for the function thingy that I have. So I'm going to write over here multiply. Obviously, it has to be an instance of it. It has to get instantiated, but it's essentially the same. It wraps that object into a function and passes it around. So when you call fa, it's like you're calling that functor. Or
You can make it like this. And all these work like a regular function and can be passed around as a single entity with all its stuff. Okay? Becomes it's like a variable that is holding a function in it. You good? So if you have a function wrapper argument, you can pass any function with that signature with it to it and then use it in there. Yes. A function pointer is low level. This is high level. This is literally a, a template, a class that holds it inside. So what you do, what instead of having five different signatures, five different syntaxes for functors, for this and that, you have one function wrapper for all of them. So with one function wrapper, you can pass a functor, you can pass a pointer, you can pass a lambda, you can pass everything to it, as long as the function wrapper's signature matches whatever you have. It's literally a wrapper, with literally a wrapper, okay? Doesn't sing properly, but it works nicely. Are we okay with this? <laughs> I know, lame joke, I know. Uh, function wrapper. No. Yes, what's up? <laughs> No, it just it does the same thing, but it, it it still carries it around, but it's a wrapper for the function in it. It's a function wrapper. So it wraps its function. If something happens inside, yeah, it's if you are doing something inside that uh, so if you are passing arguments to it, you can. If calling that operator does something to attributes of the functor, it will. That's the beauty of it. Then you have you are gonna have multiple function wrappers, each function wrapper matching that oper that operator. It's a function wrapper, not a functor wrapper. It wraps the function operator of the functor. Am I making sense? No? <laughs> then it's not a functor anymore. It's a no, function. Yeah. Yeah, put auto A is equal to that? No, that's not a function function wrapper anymore. Oh, because I thought auto function. Yeah, yeah, but auto makes this I don't even know. It makes it a make uh, um, But the thing but when you it's not a function wrapper anymore. If you put an auto over here, FA becomes a functor, not a function wrapper. No, I mean, if you take, like, if you take inside this, I have never done something like that in my life. Try it to see if it works or not. Because <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. You know? No, I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't think. Never seen it. Yeah, it's C++ is becoming so versatile in... in, in and colorful that <laughs> anything you say, it might happen one day. I don't know, but I don't think so. It doesn't make sense to me. So can you create an array of references? Can you create a vector of references? No, you can't. References has to get initialized. You cannot have reference instances. No, reference, writ, li, writ, literally references. Oh, okay. You can't. Because you can't, they created a wrapper for it. So you can wrap a reference inside a reference wrapper. Then you create an array of the reference wrapper, and therefore you have the array of references. How would you do that? Don't ask me. So... I'll tell you how, why. Give me a second. So, so I'm saying reference. So in here, this is this doesn't make any difference with a reference because I know you're going to ask, so what's the difference between this and a reference? <laughs> yeah, I'll show you in two seconds what's the difference. Okay, so that's the syntax. Okay, so you create a 
reference wrapper for a long, so that long becomes the same thing as that L thingy that you have. Are we okay down to this point? That's the syntax for it. This is the difference. You cannot create a reference, a vector of references, but you can create a vector of reference wrappers and then set them to the same thing. So essentially, this vector will be a reference of that vector. Every single element of this one becomes a, right? So you can set this reference after the fact. You don't need to initialize it. Does that make sense now? You cannot create a reference. At, you, can you create an array of references? You can't because you cannot initialize it. You cannot create an array of references and then set it to something. No, you can't. No, you can't, sadly. OK? But with reference wrappers, you can. You can actually wrap references and uh, pass it around. So, it, so if you want to pass a reference of something, uh, like, a, like a variable, you can. That's the reference wrapper. <laughs> Now I have more of these things to come. My apologies. <laughs> so sometimes you have a specific type of function, and you want that function to always to be called exactly the same way. Kind of when you don't have, let me take this out. What? Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, in 15 minutes, 244 begins. All right, so <clears throat> um, say I want to have this line. Uh, thingy of mine that that prints uh, that print series of lines for, so it draws a line for me. I want HR as horizontal ruler to print seventy of these things for me, and this doesn't have a default value. How do I do that? How do I make an HR function that uses that? Not overload it. I'm not. I don't want to call it. I don't want to create a new function to call it. I want to make this function call to be done in a specific way when I want to. You can bind its arguments to something. So you can, I can actually say, I want auto hr to be binding of the line function with, say, dashes and 70 characters. So any time I call HR, that will happen. So that's how you do it. That's called binding. To bind uh, a specific type of function call to only one function call with no arguments. Yes, sir. What does it return? 
returns a function binding. It returns a function. Pardon me? Of course you can. That's how much you do it in auto, can't you? How do you do auto in lambda expressions? Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's that. So what does bind return? I don't know. Try it and let me know. So there you go. Holy schmoke. I can't even understand the thing. So, so it returns a constant expression. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So using this, you can bind certain things and pass it around if you want to as a, as a function that receives nothing. Okay. Uh, so uh, the problem is that what happens if you want to pass a reference of something to the bind? You can't do that. If you want to pass a reference, let me just show you. So say I have this. If I bind that, so if I actually have something like and I'll go to add one and I'm going to say bind uh, the ink with A and uh, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. A and B, right? So I'm binding that, right? Then I'm going to say add one. So if I write something like this, unfortunately, this will happen. Bind cannot bind anything by reference. So when you bind it, it's going to bind the values. It doesn't do by reference. So although you are passing reference, it's going to be some copies of these being passed, unless you force it to be a reference. How can you force it to be a reference? No. Reference. Now you're passing its reference. All right? OK, yes. When are, when do you, oh. If you have a choice, use whichever you want. When you don't have a choice, use what you have to. Let's put it that way. If you have never faced a moment that you say, I cannot use a point, a reference, like for example, you want to, let's say you want to return a, when you are creating an array, you create an index operator that returns a reference. If you want to go out of index, how can you return a reference if you want to validate it? Say I have a location, I put call it garbage, and I would say if they go off reference, I want the reference of garbage to be sent, otherwise the reference of the element of the array. How can you do that? Can you create a reference variable and set it to different things based on what happens? You don't know what I'm talking about? Bless you. Give me a second. Yeah. 
So in here I have, what do I have? I have a template uh, uh, type name T and size T size. So I have uh, uh, array, class array. Okay, now in here I'm going to have something like, uh, what do I write? Uh, I'm going to write, I'm going to make it easy. So I'm going to say over here, T uh, um, data, and I'm going to put size over here. Okay. And in here I'm going to go array uh, actually uh, is set to default. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to create uh, T reference operator index okay and in here I have size t index right in here I want to return uh, data index but I want it when index goes off size I want to send a garbage value. How do I change the, so I, I want to say over here, and I don't want to use two return statements. Yeah. It's against my religion. Okay? Yeah, right. so, so two return statements, I cannot say um, if index is greater than or equal to size, return, return, seriously return garbage, and else return data. I want to have a variable over here. And return that one. I have it. Can I? Can I create over here? T reference temp, and say temp is equal to garbage. And I say return temp. No, no, no. I want garbage to be garbage. I cannot create a reference. It has to be initialized. What can I do? The answer is you use a pointer because you cannot use a reference here. Why? You use a pointer like this. You set it to the address of garbage. Then you say if index is less than size. temp is address of data, and you return the target of temp. I can't use reference here. I'm, for me, like, I always use, like, like, why would you, like, always just use it. You can't, because when you want to pass arguments with no address of, you can't. It has to be a reference. Oh, okay. Some, yeah. Did I make sense here? That's the OP244, right? What? Why are you laughing? That's simple. That's OP244. That's OP. Anyways, people are waiting outside. Have a good day. <laughs>